Hey there, Leo Marquez, the digital media lab tech here at San Joaquin Delta College, and uh, just back again with another workshop. So today we're going to be doing a video workshop. So if you joined us the other day, we were doing an audio workshop. Today we're doing video. Awesome. Move this up here. So that's out of the way. Cool. So <clears throat> welcome to the video workshop. <laughs> at uh, this is again the digital media program so really what these workshops are just to kind of highlight some of the things that you would learn as if you were taking one of the classes so it's kind of like a little uh, trial I guess you could say uh, into some of the things that you would learn however I try to make it as basic as possible um, because of course if there as if there's way too much information going on I don't think anybody would really catch on to it in a simple 30 40 minute uh, zoom call right Okay, so here's just some of the things that we're going to just be going over today. So we will be going over Adobe Premiere Basics. Um, what does it take to start and finish a simple project? What is pre <laughs> what is pre production? What equipment is needed to make content? What post production? What is post production? What is color correction? How do you export to an MP4? Okay, all right. So here's a little step by step, uh, pretty simplified. So number one, planning, right? So having the ideas for your video, where, is, where do we start with creating content for video? So you want to write your ideas down, even if it's if it's messy, you know, um, I, I truly find that for me, whenever I have an idea, if I like put it in the notes part of my phone, or if I just write it down in one of the notebooks that I know that I use daily, I know I'll end up looking at it and then I can continue to think about it and then it turns into something. So really planning in any way that works best for you is always going to be better than not trying at all, right? Okay, number two, equipment list. So you want to think about your camera, uh, lenses, tripod, microphone. Um, if you are, if you already are thinking about locations and things like that, you know what kind of equipment would you need for that? Do you need lights? Is it going to be dark outside? Are you going to be inside? So things like that. And then pre-production would be. Um, you know, shot list, storyboarding, locations, you know, putting a script together. If you have one, maybe you don't need a script. Um, maybe you just have kind of like a list of directions. You, you know what kind of transitions you're going to do with your camera movements and stuff like that. And then, of course, production is, you know, filming it, putting it all together. And then five post-production editing color correction, fine tuning everything. And then six is exporting, getting it ready for distribution. So here's a little example of what a shot list looks like. This is fairly detailed, but they can be even simpler than this. So normally with shot lists, you know, you have the, the script reference number, you have your shot, uh, whether it's interior, exterior, what type of shot it is. So WS would be wide shot, right? Camera angle, eye level, static. So this is pretty descriptive. Audio is going to be voiceover, but this is very helpful because it's a guide and it helps you stay organized and stay on track because most of the time when we do create a video for something we like to have a specific timeline right we want to stay on track we don't want to end up steering off and sometimes steering off works well with some people but sometimes it's it's best to have at least some type of game plan right so you can go into it and have an idea of okay this is what we have set up however if it doesn't work out then you know we can add things to it but this is a, a good starting point your equipment list will have things like what kinds of lenses do you want to use you know there's all kinds of things on here again this is a very detailed kind of list uh however you know there's there's things that you maybe wouldn't think of normally so that's why it's always good to have a list you know maybe you need cables maybe it's just as simple as putting down like a power strip or an extension cable something like that so it's it's good to keep track of these things and then this would be an example of a storyboard so you put the scene number here you would draw a little kind of animation here and then some sort of description of what's going on So our timeline, right? So we have 
importing our footage. So when we're all done shooting, we're ready to, to get it going, start the editing process. Where do we start from? We want to import our footage. We want to organize our footage and all of our assets. We want file management. Super, super important because keeping organized with large video files is so incredibly important because if you end up losing footage or you don't know where you put it, maybe you didn't create your folders correctly, that can get messy and then it can get frustrating and nobody likes to be frustrated while they're editing videos. Then you have step three, right? Importing files into Premiere. So after everything's fi finally organized, we can bring it into Premiere or whatever um, video software you're using and have it all set up in there. And inside of Premiere, you can even create an even more organized way of putting it all together because you could create bins and folders and things like that. And it's great. And then, of course, you begin editing. And once you finish editing, you export. So it's that simple. That's it. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so uh, if you have any questions uh, already, please feel free to email me. My email is leo.marquez at deltacollege.edu. And our website and social media handle, uh, kwdc.fm is our website. You can go there. Uh, I'll show you guys really quickly just kind of what that looks like. So we have all kinds of things here. You can go to the digital media updates and take a look into what our classes are looking like as we previously were known as radio and television. Now we are digital media. So if you take a look here, you can search for our classes. We have videos on how to register, FAQ, COVID safety. And then over here, it's loading a little slowly, but there's a PDF that has literally everything you need to know about our change. Um, our new degree, our new certificate, so what units and classes uh, that looks like. Okay, so it's a lot of really, really good information, and you can keep scrolling down, but we have lots of great things here. You could also request more information so you can get a call from Professor Broger herself, talk a little bit more about the program. All right, so we'll go back into here now, and uh, I'll just tell you if you guys can stay updated with us. I'm constantly on our social media uh, so definitely follow us at D Media SJDC. Uh, I post the workshops and things like that. And they're always free and open to the public. We, these are not where you have to be a Delta College student to attend these. So please, by all means. And this will be recorded and on demand on our YouTube channel. OK, so now let's get into I'm going to stop share real quick. Let's get into editing, right? So I'm going to open a Premiere. Okay. So here I have a folder that says tutorials. Um, so this is where I like to try to organize my videos and things. So I'm trying to be even more organized than I was before because I, I file management is very, very key for me. So this is a fully tutorial that I did. So I'm just going to kind of briefly show you guys some things, uh, some little editing tricks and stuff like that. So you can see already in here in my fully tutorial folder, I have other subfolders, right? So I have sound effects. I have my Premiere files, specific folder for my Premiere files. I have all my footage in one place. I have Foley Tutorial VO. So this is where I had to add in a little extra voiceover part, right? And then I have my extra assets. So these are things like that I downloaded or maybe a little intro music. And then, of course, I have a folder just for my exports. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to open up. And you can see here I have two different ones, right? So I have Foley Tutorial Full fully tutorial version one. So the reason for that is because I created this one first because what I did was I edited one section of it and then I saved as and I made this one. So I know this is the full tutorial video that I have put together. So I'm going to open up this one and I had moved two things around because I want to show you guys a little something that is very important. This is why file management is so important. It's probably if I'm correct, it'll pop up as I as I know that it will. <laughs> so let's see. Let's let it load. It's going to say two files are missing because I moved them on purpose for this reason to show why file management is so important. OK, so now look, it says locate. 
So we want to locate them. We need to find these two here. So fully project example. Let's see, where did I put that? I put that here. So we're going to say, okay. Because again, I said I moved these files. So once you click on one, it'll automatically find the other ones usually, but sometimes you do have to do it one by one. But I just want to show you in here what this looks like over here. Now I could have I could have been a lot more organized about this. I could have for sure. Um, however, I wasn't working with a lot of videos, so I kind of just had it all placed into my project folder over here. So this is holding everything, right? But sometimes it's best to be super organized. So if I wanted to, I can create a bin where I'm going to say, this is where my uh, sound effects will go, right? Sound effects. Okay, I can make another bin that says, where did it go? I thought I just created a new one. New bin. I don't see it anywhere. Where did it go? Oh, it did one inside of there. Okay, so say we have we have sound effects, right? Okay, so let's just say that's a sound effect. We're gonna put that in there. And then this is a sound effect. Let's put that in there. So we're just cleaning this up over here. And then we have a bunch of footage, right? So I'm gonna create another bin and it's gonna say footage. So now what I can do, let's change the view of this, cancel. Oh, here we go. So now I want to put everything that is just video clips into this footage bin. So I can do that. Footage. 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 Perfect. So now that looks a lot more cleaned up. We'll put that into our sound effects. So now everything's way more cleaned up. If I drop this down, all my footage is in here, then all of my sound stuff is over here. So there's different ways to keep it organized, right? Okay, so now I just want to kind of zoom in here. So here we have our timeline. We have our program window. We have our effects controls, Lumetri scopes, and other things. So if I was to click on this video here, you would see in effects controls, we get these lovely controls over here. So we could change the scale, the position, rotation, stuff like that. On this side over here, we have our essentials graphic. Let me move my little zoom bar thing away. So we have our essentials graphics. And if I click on audio, I can see there's audio, there's effects, um, color. Okay, so all different kinds of things that we can go through on here. But again, I want to stick to the basics. So I just want to show you guys some things in this project, and then I'll show you how to open up your own project. Okay. So let's just take a look at some of the things I got going on here. So we have some audio tracks, we have a couple of video tracks. So let's just take a look at the first couple of seconds, right? And I'll try to explain a couple of things. It's a little laggy because right here I'm playing it at one fourth. Okay. And then I also have toggle proxies on. I do this to not completely destroy the power that is being processed and rendered for everything. So a lot of this stuff is high definition. When you're working with high definition footage and, and even graphics, you want to play back at a slower rate and not at full definition because it will buffer less, if that makes sense. So let's see. Let's see there, we got the little rainbow wheel. Little slow. Hey there, guys. Hey there, guys. Leo here with another tutorial. We're going to get into how to create your Foley project. So, 
we're gonna go through all of the steps. I'm gonna so give you guys- I, I, I start with that and then I go into this, right? So I have a series of different shots happening. And this is my, so this is an example of the storyboard for the video that I did the tutorial for, okay? So I had listed all the different shots that I was gonna do prior to the storyboard. And that's where all of this is here. So I decided to do a shot like this. I thought it'd be interesting, kind of creative, right? I'm writing everything down. And then I go step by step, okay? And then I go into on how to edit it all together. So I have all of this here. And then continues, continues. Get to the end and I show what the actual final product looks like. Okay. So I'll go ahead and show you guys real quick what that looked like. So all of what you've just seen right now has been color corrected it has uh, sound effects on it so let me open up that folder now okay i'm going to open up that project and show you how i put that piece together okay so so we have a lot of things going on here i'm trying to make it small so you can kind of see the different tracks So intro graphic, you can download graphics from many different places. Um, we pay into a subscription with Envato. Envato has a lot of great graphics. Um, they have great stock footage, things like that. So you can see over here, um, I have all different types of, of graphics and they're easy to download. You click here and uh, you know, you would go into, and again, staying organized, I have a whole templates folder, right, for everything. So depending on what project I'm working on, it will be different for each one. So here in my promo videos, I have extra assets where I keep my motion graphics templates, and I can go in and I can open it up, and then they will pop up over here. So it's really simple and it's as simple as dragging and dropping it over to use these essentials graphics. Okay. Now, so we don't get too far off and I don't confuse anybody with too much information and just kind of want to show you briefly how things get put together. How do we edit? So again, the, the, the storyboard is what keeps me on track, right? So you saw the, the written, little drop of the storyboard so i knew which shot to do because i filmed this all by myself so we start with this first shot right so this was the shot on the storyboard so i knew exactly what i was going to do i pick up the pen and then we hear a sound effect right so in this in this video is for foley project so i i put little sound effects in there so none of this is is necessarily uh, the sound as I had um, as I had recorded it, but uh, just to show you an example, okay? So we pick up the pen, and you can see everything looks very sharp, looks very clear, because again, color correction. So if we go into color here, you can see. I mess with the curves. So the RGB curves are really nice because you can adjust a lot of different things. So if I turn this off, you can see that's what it looked like before I had color corrected anything. But I wanted to sharpen it up and warm in a warmth, uh, add some warmth to the image. So that's why I color corrected it. So I played around with the reds, with the greens, with the blues. Very subtle though, not anything super dramatic because you you just want to kind of capture whatever aesthetic it is that you're going for color and everything and just some little subtle basic color correction it brought up the exposure a little bit brought up the contrast a tiny bit um so nothing too dramatic it just kind of depends on what you're going for right we go from here to here move on over and that's it right 
So I stuck to my storyboard. I color corrected. I added sound effects. I added some music and everything really is as easy. So importing is you're just dragging and dropping your footage into this area over here. This is the project window. So that's where you keep all your assets. So any music, any sound effects, things like that. So that's where you want it to go. Okay. Now, just kind of going back over here, kind of go back a couple spots to our timeline. Here we go. All right. So editing, let's talk about a couple of uh, quick keys and things like that, right? So you can see some of these shots are a little, a little different here. So go into footage. So let's just play around with one of these, okay? So I'm gonna drag and drop it over here. But another way that you can create your edits for each piece is if you know where it's gonna start and end, right? So you can see on this one, I I had a couple different versions of me doing this. And so I was like, where do I want this shot to start? And end? so I felt like, well, with this one, I started it right here the second that I start stripping the paper so I said I want to get it right as I'm just about to rip it off so that's why I have little uh, markers here so I have in and out so how do you mark those we'll say I wanted it to start over here I would hit I here and then I would be like okay I want it to stop right there I would hit out so then I would click and drag this over here. So you see how I did that. And then you would just continue to piece it together like that, right? And then once you're all said and done, you would want to export it. So we have here, this part is highlighted, right? If I was to bring this over, you can see it's moving. So this is creating the in and out point of our video because just like in audition, if we don't do that, it's gonna grab all this extra space over here that's gonna be just a black screen with no sound. And we don't want that to happen. We don't wanna not see anything. So as the second that my video is over that I say it should be over, I hit out on the keyboard and then you could either hit Command M or go File Export Media and then you're gonna scroll in here, make sure render at maximum depth is checked. Use maximum render quality is checked. We are at H.264 because that is MP4. And then you're gonna click on this highlighted blue here. And this is where you're gonna go back into where you need to save this file. So for, for this, I created a folder here, video workshop. So I'm going to save it here. Okay. I'm going to say, this is my video workshop video <laughs> and hit save. Okay. So now you can see the name changes there. However, in most cases you would want to put like version one, right? So you know what version that is. Maybe put your name L Marquez. Stay organized with it, you know, and then you would hit export and then it would export and show up into that folder. Now we're going to backtrack a little bit because I know I said a lot of things <laughs> before we do. I just want to tell you guys a couple quick keys that are very, very useful and very, very important. OK, so. If I use C on the keyboard here, I can get my little razor tool and cut, cut, cut wherever I need to. If I hit V again, I go back to my move tool. I can move things around. I can hover over the right side or left side and make this longer or shorter if I needed to. If I zoom in here and here, I can get in and see the volume. I can bring up the volume. I can bring it down. If I double click on this, it's going to pop up over here, giving me my effects controls again. So things like that are really key to remember. And always, 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 I'm going to say this, Command S to save your projects constantly. Because uh, one thing that is very useful in Premiere is if you actually turn off your autosave, it does help your RAM uh, 
process faster when you're rendering, when you're playing back. Don't turn it off if you truly need to keep the auto save. I am very used to hitting command S constantly. Every edit I make, I just hit command S. Uh, so that way I know my project is being saved. It's also good to save different versions. Like I said, you can save as, go back into that folder, say I you know, added something to it. We'll say version two added music or something, right? So we could do something like that. So now we can keep track of different edits, different versions of our project within Premiere and stay organized that way. Now that I've shown you a little bit about editing part, I'm going to quickly uh, just show you how we would start a new project. So say we just are starting from scratch and move this thing out of the way. So what, how do we start a project? Okay. I know we kind of went forward a little bit and now we're going backwards. I'm very sorry. <laughs> uh, so let's hit browse here. I'm going to go into desktop. Here we go. Videos, workshops, video workshop, choose. So with uh, Premiere, we don't normally get a folder that would be made for us. It's just gonna be all the files put into whatever file you chose. So I like to make a folder called Premiere Files and then save my project in there to stay organized with everything else. So like I showed you guys earlier with, um, with, with this one, the Foley tutorial, there is you know Premiere Files, sound effects, footage, all that stuff. So just to stay extra organized with that. There's my Premiere Files folder. So now we're going to call this what it is. Say version one and hit OK. So now we're starting from scratch. So I'm going to close that. So now you can see there's nothing happening here. So how would we bring in new footage, right? So I'm going to drag and drop this into here. Let's say we wanted that. Let's say we wanted um, some music. There we go. Something simple. Okay. So how do we get this into the timeline? We right click here. We can say new sequence from clip. Boom, popped up on the timeline. Now you could be like, well, Leo, I didn't want the whole video in there. I wanted to go in, edit pieces out. I wanted it to start here and here. Well, that's fine. But what I like to do is so I know that the videos that I'm using are going to stay at the same sequence settings. I start it that way. Then I click on this video and I delete it. Now I can go back in. I can make the edit that I wanted and I can drag and drop this video in here. And now I can go into my graphics. I can grab a cool intro. Pop it there, drag this over. I'm going to zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. Grab my music. Bring that in there and hit C so I can cut it delete that part. And if you hover over the right here or the left-hand side of any clip, if you right click, you can do add default transition and then I'll add a, a, just a basic crossfade. Okay. You could bring the volume down here and cut it back over here. So that way we can hear what we just did. Oh, and let's also change this. So if we click on any kind of essentials graphic, if you click on it, there's going to be an edit window on this side. So we could say video workshop. That looks pretty weird. Uh, what if we do like this? That works. Just for an example. So let's go with it. Hold on, maybe I want it to slowly fade in, right? So we'll add a little transition here and here. We get a nice, smoother intro. Let's see. And we could say, okay, maybe I want it to cut off right there at six seconds. So we could bring that back, apply a little default transition there, and bring this part back. Before we go any further, let's pull our title in. 
So that could work, right? And of course, you could always add any kind of endings that you want. But say we were like, okay, this video is done. I'm going to just go frame by frame until it goes black. Let's fade in. Let's zoom in a little more so you can see. I can go frame by frame. And then now the video is over. So I'm going to hit O. And then again, we're going to file export media. Scroll down, render maximum depth, maximum render quality. Click here. Make sure it's going back into our appropriate folder, Premiere Files. And say video workshop. And then export. And there we go. We're exporting. Now, it may take a while, depending on what you're doing. However, uh, it's definitely going to start off by giving you a big number estimated time, 15 hours sometimes it'll say. But depending on the RAM capabilities that you have, your computer might end up actually exporting in like three to five minutes. So this computer here uh, that I'm using thing has 64 gigabytes of RAM on it. So it actually processes pretty fast. So anytime I see this number, it doesn't stress me out. <laughs> um, for video, more than more than likely, you want to make sure that the computer you're editing on has at least 16 gigabytes of RAM or more to properly process uh, any kind of high definition videos. I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel though because I don't actually need to export this video. We're gonna command save and we are going to quit. Uh, yes, stop share. And that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you uh, for joining us. Again, this is gonna be on demand on YouTube. So uh, remember, you can always check out our program, get some more information. You can request more information at www.kwbc.fm. Follow us on our social medias and we'll see you guys at the next workshop. Take care.